Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here in these two jars is one material that we use pretty regularly in my worm bins, which is my worm chow, and another material which is kind of new. I had a whole bunch of peanut shells laying around, so I pulverized the peanut shells in a similar fashion. And you can definitely tell them apart. There's a distinct color difference between the two. And I know for a fact that the worm chow, the worms like, because I'll sprinkle that stuff out onto the top covering papers of my worm bins, and the worms generally come up for that stuff in great numbers. They gobble the stuff up, and they usually gobble up the paper on which the stuff has been sprinkled as well. So to put this stuff into, into a test, this peanut shell, we did sort of a side-by-side -side comparison. We took the top covering newspaper that was laid out onto a couple of my red wiggler bins, and we sprinkled my worm chow onto one of them, and we sprinkled the pulverized peanut shell onto the top coating of the other one. And the two systems that we're talking about are these two red wiggler bins. The older of the two is 250 days old, the younger 215, 250 and 215. Pretty similar sounding dates, but there's more than a month difference in their ages. After 10 days, it seems like we might be able to assess the outcome of that trial. And after 10 days, it also seems like they're probably due for a feeding. After all, all they got last time was a cucumber and some coffee, so I think they're due. So let's get these guys up on the bench, and we're going to get them fed. To a certain degree, the stuff they're getting today is very similar to what they got last time. It's more cucumber for the most part, and more coffee. And I guess at the end, we'll probably bring back the worm chow and the peanut. But if it seems like they're just as accepting of the peanut shell as they are of the worm chow, I'm just going to go ahead and combine this stuff and make it into a, you know, a mix. So let's get these things uncovered. To help us remember how things were arranged, we attempted to write out a letter onto each system. This one, this piece of plastic's got a uh, worm hanging out on it, so I folded it over to not let it get dry here too. I could see a couple worms hanging out on this plastic too, so we'll fold that one over too to not let it dry. Hopefully the worms won't freak out. Okay, this is interesting. <laughs> not quite what I was expecting. I believe that we had laid out the word, gosh, I'm pretty sure we had tried to create the letter C to represent chow, worm chow, but then again it was oriented in my direction so it was easy for me to read. I believe it doesn't really add up at this point. I'm not sure what I'm seeing here. I mean the diagonal shape is for sure. I'm also assuming that because of the reception of what was put in here, the worms definitely liked it, so this must be the worm chow, and I'm pretty sure that this was where the peanut shell had been placed. Oddly enough though, I'm also seeing that the stuff has been depleted. I mean, I see no signs of this stuff here. The only key difference is that the paper was not gobbled up the way it was over here. So it does seem like both the worm chow and the peanut shell both got consumed completely. But in the case of the worm chow, they went ahead and they consumed the paper at the same time too. I'll tell you, <laughs> it almost seems like you would want to take odds on what's going to happen in these worm bin tests because it's never what you predict. It always seems like some sort of outlying result is what's going to end up becoming the outcome because I certainly didn't expect to see what I'm seeing here mainly. I think I knew what to expect over there because that's kind of a run-of-the-mill run thing that we do over there pretty regularly. Here, on the other hand, I wasn't expecting to see the pulverized um, peanut shell vanish and the paper remain untouched. Very, very peculiar. <laughs> Crazy worms, always keeping me guessing. So I, um, I, I guess you probably saw what was over here next to the coffee. A whole bunch of paper towels with which I thought we would come in today and um, do replacement top coverings. So my thought was that we would just use these leftover bits of newspaper, whatever amount of it remained, as supplementary bedding down in the feeding areas. 
So I'll just set this stuff aside and then we'll try to divvy it out evenly. Obviously the stuff over here has been pretty heavily depleted. So there's a lot more leftover paper over here in the younger bin that we can try to evenly distribute into both systems when we get around to replenishing the feeding zones and placing some bedding down under the feeding. So we had um we had done something similar. We put down some newspaper, a dry sheet of newspaper underneath each feeding and then in came the um and then in came some of the shredded paper. Here you could see some of the shredded cardboard and um, paper mix, my prepared bedding basically. And I'm just trying to remember now. I'm pretty sure that the the chunks of cucumber didn't just go straight in. I thought that I had wrapped those chunks of cucumber up into little bundles. And at this point I'm really wondering if I'm just remembering correctly even. This to me almost looks like possibly, I don't know, feels like it's a little bit slimy. Maybe it's old banana peel? It's hard to say. And, you know, talk about slimy. <laughs> the, uh, the worms are kind of crawling in between my fingers. It's funny. And I guess I'm trying to hold this thing in such a way that when a worm is about to drop off, like one just did, it's going to drop off into one or the other bin rather than in between the two bins and end up falling through the crack in between the bins and down onto the table. It'd be kind of nice if any worms that decide they want to jump ship end up in castings rather than on dry paper. You know what was really unexpected about this was that one worm in the very beginning dropped off down into the castings of one of the bins and no other worms dropped off my hand. So they've all squirmed out of view but they're all still somewhere on my hand just out of view of the bright lights. Pretty interesting how they all managed to just make their way to the bottom portion of this piece of leftover food and avoid falling off. I thought that a whole bunch of them would just come falling off, but once again, <laughs> my predictions were wrong. So I'm seeing a, a fair bit of leftover bedding material in here. Some of it even seems like it's a little bit clumped together. Kind of makes me question whether we need to add much more. We might be good with just what's here. And here's some leftovers of mango seed, stuff we've been tracking for some time now. Even last time we noticed how many how many springtails had gathered on this thing as much as the worms like the uh, mango seed it seems like the springtails like it even more because they're just all over this thing well whatever I mean the stuff's in here to get broken down one way or another whether it's worms or their helpers it doesn't matter to me I guess the only thing I'm hoping for is that we don't see a, an outbreak of springtails because there is one of my systems where it does seem like we've got a little bit of an outbreak of springtails, but I'd really prefer to just keep that situation isolated there and not see that spread to other systems. Well, there's definitely a lot of springtails on this thing and it's definitely reducing in size. We're going to stick to doing what we've done in the past, which is just to return the seed into the husk so that it can stay as sort of a single object down here in the worm bin and we'll be able to finally without any further interruptions maybe <laughs> complete our assessment of how things are doing down here in the feeding zone I've got only a handful of other bins older than these two I've got one system that's the one that I made reference to earlier my mixed bin of worms in which I've got sort of a little bit of a springtail outbreak occurring that one system's older than than these two and I've also got a couple other sort of twin bins or sister bins or whatever they are I can't remember those are older as well but in the case of those two bins those that paired up 
set of bins. We've already decided at the last check-in to convert those bins to the phase that I refer to as foraging, which means no more feedings, just leaving the worms to cruise through the material and pick off leftovers and try to work this stuff down to the point where it's really nothing more than castings for the most part. However, we're not quite at that same point yet, I think, here with these systems. I think we've still got a little ways to go before we get to that phase here. So I think we can keep these systems running a little while longer and continue doing everyday composting in these two bins for a little while longer. But nevertheless, I'd like to try to start gearing the feedings towards materials that I know the worms will most likely break down pretty quickly. So like, you know, the, the bedding as an example, you know, putting the old top coverings in as the bedding underneath the feeding will almost guarantee that that material will be gobbled up for the most part within one interval between feedings. Other things that I use as bedding sometimes are leaves, but when the leaves come in, they come in with their stems and the stems end up sticking around for a really long time. So I would kind of consider stems and bins that are this old as kind of a no-no or a thing to be avoided if possible. So I think we'll probably just be continuing with um, supplementing the bedding in these systems with ideally paper that's already been in the system for some time now like top covering type papers um, with the knowledge that that stuff's going to break down pretty readily versus having stuff in here that's going to linger and be um, hard for the worms to break down in a timely fashion so we've opened up a couple pretty decent sized pits here into which we can begin placing their food so we had one top covering newspaper that had held up quite nicely and it's kind of doing us a favor by tearing in half on its own right down that middle fold so that was kind of convenient and then this other one was fairly torn to pieces by the worms and I think that one too can pretty easily be divided up into two pieces and then these other chunks of newspaper are what we had placed down underneath the feeding last time. And those chunks had been placed into the worm bins fresh, dry, you know, right off my stack of supply of newspapers. So that stuff really didn't have much of a jump start. And that might be part of the reason it's still sitting around here as leftovers, despite the fact that it was resting right beneath the delicious feeding. So let's get these little guys fed. In can come a whole bunch of this peeled cucumber. My cucumber plants out in the garden. I featured it in one of my videos, perhaps yesterday's video, I don't remember. When we checked in on the outdoor worm bag, we visited in on my garden so we could see how things are going. And if you saw that video, you'll know that my cucumber plants are doing terrific. So I've got cucumbers aplenty around here. So we'll probably be seeing a lot of that stuff going to the worms as kitchen scrap leftovers. One of the things that you'll find around the dinner table here often is um, kind of a cucumber salad. Basically it's just sliced up cucumbers with the peels removed and sort of soaking in a little bit of vinegar, maybe a little dash of sugar to take that bite out of the flavor. And it goes so good as like a um, sort of a sour side dish with um, with the meal. So on top of the on top of the cucumber and other kitchen scraps can come another kitchen leftover, which is the coffee, which I believe that the worms also tend to really appreciate. A bunch of nice damp bite-sized food. And something I usually do is dress up the coffee with a little bit of my worm chow. But you know what we're going to do to my worm chow to make it even more appealing to the worms is we're actually going to dose it with a little bit of this peanut shell. I don't want to use it all up, 
I don't want it to dominate too much. I'm going to save some for my next batch and just blend it into there. And then we'll just sort of blend this into this stuff here. And this is going to be my revised worm chow. I mean, I'll admit when I prepared this worm chow, it did include some peanut shells, but just a, a few little handfuls of it along with the other ingredients. The main ingredient in my worm chow is bird seed. And a couple other things, whatever it is that's around the house at the time ends up becoming an ingredient. So um, this to me seems like something that the worms are probably going to really appreciate. At least I hope they do. Ooh. Some of the leftovers that we excavated early didn't make it back down in. Let's get those in there as well. Those mango seeds. And then we can kind of top off with some of this uneaten bedding from last time. Some of this shredded paper and cardboard mix. My prepared bedding. That to me looks like a pretty nice feeding zone that I believe the worms are going to really appreciate. Or at least I hope they will. And, oh yeah, stem of, stem of a pumpkin. I would imagine that that thing's been floating around in here for some time now. So let's, um, let's get these feeding zones covered up. Something we often do in my worm bins is excavate the outer edges just to see how things are doing. But I've got this funny feeling that things are just fine. And I believe that just for a little change of pace and to save time, we're going to um, just let the outer edges go untouched and undisturbed for one feeding interval. Perhaps we'll excavate and see how things are doing out there next time, but I don't think it's necessary to do it every single time, even though I do do it almost every single time. Once in a while, skipping something is perhaps a good practice just to prevent yourself from getting into a rut. <laughs> so now, top coverings here, my idea was to allocate three soiled paper towels to each system. To me, it just sort of seemed roughly estimating that they should fit in in a similar fashion to the way the top covering newspapers usually do. So in they go, and my thought was to, once again, Try to see if we can promote worm traffic onto these pieces of paper with a little bit of my worm chow. And I do usually like to create some sort of a pattern. And I don't know. Does it get boring when I keep doing the same thing over and over? Just a diagonal stripe? <laughs> or maybe we can do an X. Perhaps that would be even more interesting. And perhaps get the worms to consume even more of the paper. You know what? Let's just keep going. I've got enough of this stuff here. Perhaps I'll have to whip up some more soon. But why be stingy? That to me looks like something the worms should really enjoy. And I'll definitely be curious to see what they make of the, um, the top coverings now that we're using paper towel rather than newspaper. And I would have to imagine that it's going to get the same result that we saw on the worm chow side, that they're going to eat the newspaper. What I don't understand, though, and if anyone's got any insights into why we saw what we saw here in terms of the worms coming up for the pulverized peanut shell but not eating the paper beneath it, I would love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> please make your comment. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please... Don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.